Hello, my friends, and welcome into the JMAC podcast. Please take a minute and subscribe to this podcast and like and share and follow. Today, I'm going to make an attempt to sort through an issue that is turning our society upside down. And it is turning into an emotional debate. It is turning into a divisive, divisive issue. What am I talking about? The transgender issue. We're talking about those people who feel that they came here in the wrong body. I don't know if I can articulate it properly, so please forgive me if I'm not. Um, But that's just kind of what I'm hearing. And in fact, uh, this is not something that's new. I had a member of my family when I was very young, eight or nine years old, and she always felt that she was a man on the inside. She truly believed that she came here in the wrong body and that she had to deal with that her entire life. So this is real. This is an issue that is facing our society. And there's two parts of this debate that I want to deal with. The first part of the debate is how people are responding to the request from those people who are transitioning or who have transitioned to change their pronouns. This has become a huge part of the emotional equation. You have people saying, I will never refer to somebody who has transitioned by their, their, their new pronouns or their chosen pronouns. You have other people saying, you can't change your pronouns. That's not possible. You have others saying, of course you can change your pronouns. You can do whatever you want. This is America. So I want to deal with that part of the equation first. Then I want to deal with the legal side of the equation. And this is a part of the equation that I think people are afraid of. They're afraid that somehow the laws are going to creep into our society to where this is taught in schools, to where this becomes so acceptable that people will do it uh, just on a whim and uh, we don't want that. There's also the issue of whether or not kids should be able to transition before they're 18. And there's also the issue of sports. So I want to try and deal with all of these issues. And uh, I can't wait for your comments. Please know that I come from this from the same perspective that I always do. I try to research. I try to investigate. Um, And let's start out with what I consider to be the more emotional side of the equation. I see this every single day on social media, people saying that I refuse to call somebody by uh, pronouns that are not what they were born with. I'm not going to call somebody she if they're a he. I refuse to do that. There's no reason to do that. I will never do that. And I'm going to tell you, I um, I have no problem, no problem whatsoever using the new pronouns. Now, I forget, and it is hard to remember, and I have worked around several people who have asked for their pronouns to be changed, and I have members of my family who have asked And I make a good faith effort. Fortunately, they are all very kind and understanding that it's not an easy thing to do, especially if you've known this person uh, since basically since they were born. It's not an easy thing to do. But I generally in my life go around trying to uh, make people feel good. I don't ever want to be seen as an asshole. Um, Generally, if somebody asks something of me and the worst thing that they're asking is that I change a word in a sentence in how I refer to them, then why wouldn't I do that? Why why would I get caught up in, in the science and all of those things? 
Because when you talk about these issues, when you talk about transitioning and transgender, everyone I know who's going through this process or gone through this process, it's not something that happens overnight. It's not like one day they're like, I'm just going to ask everyone in the world to change my pronouns. That's not the way it works. You're talking about years and years and years and oftentimes a lifetime of coming to the point where they're finally making a choice to go through this process. You know, I hear people say, well, if you can ask me, if you can ask me to change your pronouns, then what if I want to be called the supreme commander of the earth and demand that you call me that? To me, this is such a disingenuous argument because you're just making up some title and you're acting like the people who are asking you to change their pronouns, you're acting like they just decided to do this one day. And it's not fair to them. It's not an understanding of them. It's not an understanding of what they went through. And, and quite frankly, it's, it's kind of inappropriate because it's not representative of what has happened here. You're making up some title, some crazy thing, some example that doesn't exist to suggest that that's the same thing as fighting your whole life, feeling that you're, uh, you're in the wrong body, that something in your mind, something in your soul tells you that you're in the wrong place physically. And so you're going to change that. And it's going to take decades. It's going to take years. And someone comes along and says, well, what if I just change my name to so-and-so? As if that's equal to a lifelong battle of somebody going through this process. And of course, once again, uh, the truth is we just have no empathy for people. Uh, we're in a society where we care about ourselves. When you say to somebody, I'm not going to call you by new pronouns, who are you caring about? Who are you thinking about? You're thinking about yourself. You're being selfish. You're saying, I'm going to be, and you have every right to be, free country, go for it, knock yourself out. But you're only thinking about you. And that, to me, is very sad. And, and we see more and more of that in our society. What is it going to hurt you? How is it going to damage you if suddenly you're using they and them instead of he or she. What is it going to hurt you? So the way I see it, you, you have a choice when somebody asks you to do this. You can be nice and considerate, or you can care about yourself and be a total jerk. Those, those are the options that are on the table. And as for me and, and my upbringing, and my belief system, if I can, I'm going to do something to avoid making somebody else feel bad. That's my makeup. And, and I think that most Americans are in that place. Not just most Americans, most human beings. That generally, we don't go around trying to piss people off. But there are certain cases where we get so caught up in the emotion of the issue, we show no empathy for the other person. And when they just make a request, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going through this thing. I've been fighting it for my whole life. I would prefer in the future if you referred to me in this way. And you say, hell no, I would never do that. I think it's selfishness. That's what I think it is. You have an opportunity to be kind, to be understanding of somebody who's going through something. And you you basically say, no, screw you. Screw you. Again, you're right. 
free country. Uh, but what it, I, I think it says more about you than it says about the person who is going through this trial. And if you don't think it's a trial, then I don't think that you have given any time or thought to trying to understand what other people go through. Um, I know it's a trial just from the people that I have been around who have been through this process. And I would suggest to you from my own experience that this is the hardest decision of their life. They don't make it lightly. And they're not asking you to uh, come along the journey with them. They're not asking you to even accept what they've done. They're just saying, hey, this is who I am inside. Do you think maybe you could pay respect to that? And it's about respect. Again, you have a choice to do so. Um, but unfortunately, people want to make this about chromosomes and everything else. I, I just make it about, uh, do you want to generally be somebody who is kind and respectful or do you want to be an asshole? To me, that's the, that's the debate. So that's the issue of pronouns for me. I, if you ask me to refer to you in a certain way, I will try and do it. Um, if you are just making up some crazy title because you're trying to prove a point, it's not the same. It's not the same. Stop acting like it's the same. It's just not. It's just not. So uh, I know that's going to create some controversy. Share the uh, share your comments in the in the uh, comments. I'd like to hear what you think. I'd like you to follow this channel if I've made you think a little bit. Now we come to some of the legal issues and there are legal considerations. And I will tell you with some of them, um, I struggle. So I'll give you an example of where I struggle. I struggle with somebody below the age of 18 uh, getting physical surgery to transition. I struggle with that because of the same reason that I struggle with uh, underage people smoking, uh, underage people voting. Uh, there is a general knowledge and consensus that the human brain is not fully developed until a certain age. And if you're gonna be making these massive decisions that in many cases to reverse them would be uh, would be incredibly expensive and difficult. And I don't even know if they're possible. Some of these procedures are not reversible. Um, to me, waiting to the age of 18, I hate to enforce that by law. I hate to take away choices from parents. Um, but that's just kind of what goes through my head. So I'm still processing that one. So help me out. What do you think about that? But let's talk about one of the issues where I think people are missing the boat. And that's the issue of whether or not uh, transgender people should be able to participate in the sport of the gender that they have transitioned into. This is an important discussion, and I don't hear anybody addressing this with what I consider to be the proper understanding of the, what, the way it works now and how this will impact the way it works. And see, here's what people are missing, I think, especially in high school and college sports. What is the goal of every team? And let's even go middle school. Middle school, high school, college. What is the goal of every single team? And I mean every single team, sports team. Is it participatory? Like, hey, everybody come on down and play and everybody's welcome and it's going to be a great time. It's not. 
It's not participatory. The goal of every single team that I am aware of in college, middle school, and high school is to win. And to accomplish that goal, there is discrimination involved. Yes, I said it. There is discrimination in high school sports. Why? Because it's not a participatory event. It is an event to win. So the coaches have tryouts and they choose the best of the best in those tryouts. And the best will play. And the rest will go home and not make the team. That is the stated goal. That's the way it works. My daughter, when she was uh, she was playing uh, volleyball, she was incredible. When she first started out, she was taller than all the girls because my kids sprout up faster than other kids around them. But then they stop. And so while she used to be the tallest, everyone else passed her up and now she was the smallest. And this was her life. She loved volleyball more than anything. So she goes down, she tries out. She's incredible, but she's not nearly as tall as the other girls. What happens to her? She doesn't make the team. Why doesn't she make the team? Because the goal is to win. The goal is not to make sure that everybody in the school feels good about themselves. It just, it just doesn't work that way in sports. The goal of sports is to win. And so only the best will play. This needs to be a, a fundamental understanding. And if only the best shall play, and you have somebody who has uh, transitioned to a female, but they still have all of the physical, um, what should we say, advantages over a female in muscle mass, in whatever you want to say, it, it's just it's just a fact, you cannot deny it as much as you want to, that for most sports, the male uh, physique, the male muscle structure is going to outperform the female. It's the reason why we separate the sports in the first place. Because if not, let's just say that every team was the best regardless of gender. So every team, best regardless of gender. Will, will girls get to play at all? Think about it. Will they get to play at all? Some will, but most won't. That's the reason why you have uh, men's sports and women's sports. Because if you didn't, then women wouldn't play. So knowing that, knowing that the goal is to win and that only the best shall play, then if you allow somebody who has a male physique to play in a women's sport, then they will replace a, a woman. They will replace a girl. Now, some people are like, oh, this is going to happen so little, um, then it's not, it's not going to be a big deal. It doesn't matter to me. If the goal is to have a women's and a men's so that women can have a chance to play, then you cannot let... Uh, there be a, a transgender crossover. You just can't. If the goal is participatory, like, hey, we're going to have a co-ed league and everybody who wants to play gets to play, well, then it's no big deal. But as long as the goal is to win, then discrimination will continue to happen 
Only the best will play, the best and most capable. And this is precisely why you cannot allow transgender uh, people who were who were male and are now uh, participating as a female, you cannot allow them to participate in female sports. Not the way those sports are set up now because that person will replace uh, a girl who should be on that team playing. It's just that simple for me. Again, you want to change the rules and make it about um, participation. Great. Then there's no issue. But as long as discrimination happens in sports, and it does every single day, only the best shall play, then you can't allow that crossover. You just can't. It's not fair to the girls who should be playing. And look, I know, I know the argument. And I have sympathy for the argument. And that is uh, at least the argument that I've heard. Now, um, again, I'm not in this situation. So I may not know and understand all of the arguments. So again, that's what the comments are for. We can do a live broadcast on this if we need to. But I know that that will make the person, the transgender person, feel less. I know that it could be an emotional hit. I know that it can be difficult, a difficult part of the process. And I don't like that. I, I don't want anyone to feel because of their personal choices that they are less or that they're being discriminated against. I don't. And uh, so I, I, although I believe this is the way it's got to be, um, I don't. I, I don't like how it would make somebody feel, but you may not like this comparison, but I'm going to make it anyway. When my daughter didn't make the team, the volleyball team, she was devastated. This was her whole life. She worked out in volleyball more than anybody you could ever imagine. And, and she lost out because somebody was taller. That simple. She was discriminated against because she was short. Now, I know that's different than being discriminated against because you are transgender or you are LGBTQ. I know that. I know that. But discrimination happens in sports all the time. It's a discrimination for the best to play and the others will watch. And uh, unless you change the core of that system, you cannot let... Uh, there be a transgender crossover. You just can't. You just can't. I'm sorry. You just can't. So that's how I feel about the issue. So to sum up, somebody asked you to call them by different pronouns. Be kind. Be respectful. It's not going to hurt you. It's just not. And for those who want to pass laws against it or things like that, I'm a big fan of freedom. I have friends who are free. I believe that in the Declaration of Independence, when it says to pursue life, liberty, and happiness, that it is the individual's choice what life, liberty, and happiness looks like. It's not your choice, and it's not mine. What we have to worry about is when the rights butt up against each other uh, or where there's some type of crossover like we've talked about with sports. We do have to worry about those situations. But in my mind, there should be no debate when somebody just kindly asks you, do you think you can maybe call me by a different name or by different pronouns? Give it a shot. Try and just be kind. And, you know, if, you, if you're somebody in that situation where you've asked somebody to call you by different pronouns and every time they don't, you get angry, um, I would suggest that's probably not the best place to be either. And, and I know that that's a difficult situation as well. But, uh, you know, everyone I know who's in that situation, and I'm surprised how many people I do know who's in that situation, they've been very kind. Every time 
I forget. Uh, in fact, most times when I forget, they don't even remind me. It's just later on, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I forgot that time. Uh, and, you know, we can get along. We can we can work through this. I promise you we can. But our goal has got to be more than just me, 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 me. That's just my thought. Uh, so with that, do me a favor, follow, share this. Share this because I think it's an important message. Subscribe. Let me know what you think. And with that, I hope I've made you think. And I hope you have a wonderful day.